Hey guys, as you can see, I am still in Athens, Greece. It's been two weeks. It's still summer, even though it's basically November 1st. Let me give you an update. It is a very beautiful city in some places with lots of rich history. It is very cool that you can come up and actually touch the marble that's been standing here for thousands of years, probably. Well, the first bit of good news is, as you can see, my eyes have completely healed uh, and my hand, mostly, have a bit of a broken pinky nail still that hopefully will heal, but overall, I'm feeling good. The weather has been nice. Not this sunny every day, but overall very nice for all of October. And I have to say that some of Athens is very nice, lots of history, but only some of it. For as much rich history that you have here, just a block away, you have some really bad areas as well. All right, so I'm living right here and just next door. It's right outside of the city center. Uh, it's basically the city center. It's two metro stops away from the Acropolis, which is thousands of years of history but this is actually what you see most days walking around so one of my favorite things about being in greece is how relatively easy everything is to get set up uh, especially because it's part of the eu and schengen but the one thing that is still in ancient times is their wi-fi at home i get less than one megabyte down and it's not very stable. My home Airbnb Wi-Fi, I'm getting about 20 megabytes down, but only less than one megabyte up. A lot of the times when people talk about internet speeds, they're always talking about the download speed. And that's why websites like fast.com, which is this Netflix um, sponsored speed test, they just give you one number. And it's the same on Airbnb's new speed test rating, where they'll show you the speed next to your listing sometimes. But what does this number mean? It's only half the equation. And it's fine if you're only consuming content, if you're only watching YouTube videos, if you're only downloading videos, if you're only watching Netflix. But as soon as you start creating anything or video chatting and having a two-way conversation, especially over live video, uh, as soon as you want to upload the work that you've made, as soon as you want to actually do some work, this upload speed matters just as much, if not more. And by having this insequential number, it's a terrible connection. And when I'm out, I don't always want to deal with getting a local SIM card. That's why I'm so happy that I have an eSIM installed by Olafly, which is this week's sponsor. So Olafly is a retailer of eSIMs. And if you haven't heard of eSIM, it's the easiest way to get set up with the internet when you're traveling whether you're in London on a, on a big red bus, or you're here in Greece, or any of the other 120 countries that they support. It makes it really easy. I think eSIMs are the future. So if your phone can support eSIMs, like any of the, the iPhones the last few years, or a lot of Androids, I highly, highly recommend getting eSIM. When you travel, it makes life so much easier. Imagine getting off the plane to get off the bus, and then having your internet working so you can find your Airbnb, you can get around, you're never about to mess around. In some countries, you can't even buy a local SIM card at the airport, which is insane to me. But luckily in Athens, you can, but there was a long line. So I'm so happy I can just open my phone, switch the little button and say, activate my Olafly SIM. And voila, I'm online. I don't have to worry about it at all. Right now I'm using a two week unlimited package. And so far it's been working fantastic. So if you want to sign up and get your own eSIM, you can use my link below. And they actually made a coupon code, JohnnyFD, for you to get 5% off. Because you know I'm a big fan of getting the best prices and good value. So definitely check them out. Thank you for Olafly for sponsoring this trip. These guys are working hard on a Sunday. Look at this, guys. Look at this old building with thousands of years of history. Look, you can even see here, it's an old photograph. What it looked like. Things uh, haven't changed that much for the better in some parts. I got a little bit of flack 
a few months ago, or the last trip, maybe six months ago when I was in Athens, uh, for showing kind of the crappy bad areas. That's why I've been trying to stay in nicer and nicer areas. I really like my new Airbnb, even though there is some problems there. But literally, every time I go into the city center, if I go straight there, if I take a taxi, you don't really see any of this stuff. But it's like li literally every time I walk around anywhere, you do see the grime of Athens. Some say it's part of the charm. Some say it's part of the smell. It's up to you to decide. It is definitely a very charming city though. As you can see, there's orange trees everywhere. You can't eat these unfortunately, but they exist. Here's one of the Greek theaters. And today, since it's a Sunday, I decided I'm gonna go for a little walk into the center, which is normally pretty quiet, a lot of things are closed. Got some lunch, maybe a gyros, because I'm obsessed with them and in love with them. And I'm gonna go play board games at one of these expat meetups, or international traveler meetups. I'm always tempted to eat one of these oranges, but they're not really edible. But at least not sweet. I'm thinking maybe I'll get some Indian street food or this place which looks very popular as well. I was tempted to eat here because there's a ton of people and I do like Greek food but when that uh, woman started trying to call me into the restaurant it made me feel like it might be a tourist trap so I think I'm gonna go get uh, some Indian food instead. The reviews look pretty bad so Let's uh, give in. Let's check out the spots. Yamas, can I have the mixed grill uh, squirrels? Yes, for the main dish, right? Yes, and one bottle of water. Is it for you to go? Right here, please. Nine euro twenty cents. Okay. All right. So I just ordered a mixed grill, which I think they're cooking here. How are you? I'm good. The master's at work. Okay, thank you very much. Wow. Beautiful. Thank you. All right, guys. So this plate was nine euros, 20 cents. The water is only 50 cents. Very nice. You don't see that really anywhere in the world anymore. Not maybe Thailand or Asia. Fries are okay. Now look at this. These are vodka sticks. Not bad. Not the best in the world, but it's not what I expected for a treat food. Pass food stuff here. One thing I really like about Athens or Greece is every sink is this old big thing of marble. Do you know how expensive this would be back in the US? But here it's staggered. Thank you, bye bye. So I had a uh, pretty decent lunch here. It was, it was okay, a little bit of a tourist, very touristy Greek weirdo restaurant. But the funniest thing about how, the plate that I had is it's basically just three weirdos deconstructed. So it looked like a platter. I guess you get a little bit more french fries and a little bit less bread. But I'd probably rather just eat two weirdos. It's kind of like a Mexican food when you have a burrito versus a platter. Sometimes it's kind of just like a deconstructed like burrito bowl, just a burrito in a bowl. Alright. So now I'm gonna find that random uh, I don't know if it's a cafe or someone's house, but I'm playing board games there. Let's go. Look at this, guys. If anyone needs a dog mug, they got them for you. Man, I could have had tacos instead. I hope this is for three tacos. That's well, expensive. Wow, it's expensive. That's crazy. Okay, I guess it's not crazy. It's just normal priced. But in my mind, when you're in, I forget that when you're in Greek, in Greece, or when you're in, you're in Athens, the Mexican food is like international luxury food. 
because I'm thinking, like, when I'm in California, a gyrodos, so like a pita, and a, a burrito or like a taco is, should be the same price. But I guess if you were in Mexico, Greek food would be expensive. So when you're in Greece, Mexican food should be expensive. Scooter, 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 scooters. And I guess the place we're meeting is actually a board game cafe. Like, that makes sense, I guess. But before we go in, let's take a look down here. It looks really happening. Even though supermarkets are closed on Sundays, a lot of restaurants stay open and we'll kind of just hang out. So my last video when I was here six months ago, that was one of the best Euros places in Athens. And it was closed on Sundays. Yet all these are open. So kind of random, right? But definitely a very cool area. So it looks like a pretty cool board game cafe. With different uh, Dungeons and Dragons stuff, Pokemon, giant chess. And games. Wow, it's really cool. Definitely tons of games as I hang out and do. And there's a coffee shop and a bar. Hello, how are you? Yeah. Uh, you just pick a table and uh, place your order. Uh, you're afraid to use the uh, burgers. Oh, okay, so it's for your charge, you just drink yeah, yeah. five drink? Right. Oh, nice. You're from the States? Yeah, from the States. Really reasonable prices as well. Alright, so uh, bad news is there's no one there. Everyone's late. And it'll be like an hour late, so I'm not gonna wait around. It's crazy though. There's so many people hanging out having drinks, you know, coffee, and just eating snacks, uh, mostly drinking, or having coffee and nobody's in the board game cafe. I think it's because it's summer still, even though it's November. People want to be outside. It's a nice day, so people want to be outside. But that board game cafe is really cool. But that's kind of, uh, kind of sums up Greek culture or life in Athens. People are, I think it's very normal for people to late all the time. I kind of be like, ah, it's gonna meet at two, but it really means maybe, you know, Head out of the house at 2, meet at 3. And people like to just kind of hang out and have drinks and sit around, you know? And not like actually like do stuff. And of course you have the traffic as well. The city center of Athens has terrible traffic almost every day. Luckily they have metros so you can always skip the streets. So that's kind of the weird relationship I have with Athens. Is on one hand, on paper it has everything I like. Low cost of living, great weather, it's walkable, lots of restaurants, lots of cafes, cool things to do. But I don't know, it just doesn't act, I don't feel I don't feel at home here ever. But definitely a very cool place to come. For tourists, I think it's a fantastic place in Europe. Great weather, it's pretty walkable, uh, very walkable in the city center at least. Uh, old museums, cheap restaurants, good food, great wine. Oh my god, guys. I just walked out of this crazy hellhole tourist trap. But it's not actually just tourists. Lots of like actual locals that come eat here. But it's just a lot of people everywhere. And lots of tourists. Even though it's no longer the tourist season, technically. Guys, 
I cannot imagine coming to Athens in August or July during the actual tour season. I would hate it so much. I think that's why I only come here like the off season, like April or September, October. No, not even September, October, November, December. Here we go, guys. That's the uh, Acropolis that everyone loves so much. And in some parts, it kind of still looks like a bazaar, right? From what you would have saw hundreds of years ago. In some senses, just uh, modernized. Here's the metro. Pretty crowded. He just said something in Greek that I didn't understand. Everyone's walking that way now. Maybe there's not going to be that many trains. Probably there's not that many trains. Man, there's going to be a tight squeeze on this. It's a lot of people. Look at this. I don't think you guys can see because all the way. takeaway which I'll show you for dinner uh, for four euros and I think he said 20 eggs for two euros it's very cheap especially because it's labeled 16 cents per egg so I would imagine 10 would be a dollar 60 and like so she shouldn't give me more than 14 I guess I should count, I don't know I didn't count it to be honest but either way it's very cheap so I told you I am staying in a slightly nicer neighborhood but all neighborhoods kind of look like this. Mine literally has, is on the wrong side of the tracks. And there's literally a guy who operates these. So when the train comes, he manually puts these down so people can't drive across. But yeah, this is my uh, everyday walk home. It's not really like necessarily a, it is a nicer area where I was last time. But it's more just like a suburb. So I'm two or three metro stations away from like the touristy uh, center. Uh, I'm at Atiki, and it's good because there's the two lines, both the uh, red and the green, M1 and M2. Ironically, th there's no sign that says M1 or M2. And if you ask the local, they have even like a security guard or a cop, they have no idea what M1 M2 means. That's just what the official name is in Google Maps. <laughs> But you know, this is where I live. This, I guess, used to be a playground. Welcome to my home. Uh, I don't know, because I've never been, but a few people have told me that this place, or Athens, uh, is very similar to Israel, like the way people that people live. But it's just way cheaper here. People are like kinder. Greeks are very friendly people. And it's definitely much cheaper here than in Tel Aviv. All right, guys, so I showed you my place a little bit last time, but this is kind of where I've been doing my work and hanging out. Um, just uh, settling in, spent a lot of time on this couch, watching uh, YouTube and Netflix. And if you look at this table, it's just full of stacks. It's kind of a mess. I'll be honest, guys. My life has been kind of a mess these last couple of weeks. Um, first, from just healing, uh, the eye never got fully closed with swelling, but it did get worse. Uh, if you ever get a black eye, even though the first day is not going to look very bad, by day two or three, that's when it really starts swelling up. So you have to ice and take care of it. The hand, uh, it's much better than it was, but the first two weeks, 
it was really bad. I couldn't type, I couldn't do anything. Luckily, I had some videos in queue already that were edited, but I really couldn't do anything for the last couple, the first like week or two. Um, now, you can tell my thumb is still wonky. I can't make a, I can't make it straight. Hopefully that'll recover one day, but it might never. And that's kind of just the, the price to pay. Uh, I almost don't want to show you, but my nail is completely effed. Um, it is what it is, guys. It is what it is. At least it's still sunny outside. I sit out here sometimes. Normally, most Greek people will put the shades down, if you see. Even on this side, there's no sun because they really don't want the place to get hot. So I normally put this down a little bit later in the afternoon. It's actually a really clever design. You just spin it. There you go. And let me give you the tour of the rest of the apartment. This place was definitely someone's family home. You can see like your wife's photo, some of their favorite uh, musicians. So it has felt very comfortable and very homey. And I like the big TV and this, this, the speaker. Uh, the bathroom is pretty old, but it works. One thing I've done is, uh, one thing I've done is, I've been taking cold showers these last couple of weeks. First, uh, it's healthy and reduces inflammation. Uh, the second, you know, people in Ukraine haven't had electricity. So I've been trying to, you know, kind of in solidarity, just use less electricity. That's why I don't turn on the, the AC. Um, luckily it's not cold here, but you know, that's why I just use the, the windows. I try to just conserve and by not using hot water, I kind of feel a little solidarity, you know, a little bit of their suffering. Um, I know it's not, you know, much, but it's kind of just a way maybe if all of us just take cold showers until this war is over, it kind of, you know, it, it makes us feel a little bit more connected to uh, what people have to go through in Ukraine. Now to the war in Ukraine, where President Volodymyr Zelensky says Russia's attacks on his country's power grid have left four and a half million people in the dark. Recent Russian strikes have done enormous damage to Ukrainian critical infrastructure, including damaging 40 percent of its power system, according to Ukrainian officials. We should also point out, though, that Ukrainians uh, seem to be doing a good job of kind of patching together their damaged critical infrastructures. For example, earlier this week in Kiev, the capital, uh, officials said that 85 percent of the city was without water. But within a day, the city had water again. Uh, here's my kitchen. I've been doing a lot of cooking here. This used to me love, hate Nespresso. I hate these because first, this coffee is terrible. Uh, I realize the reason why I hate Nespresso so much, it's each little capsule, is each little capsule is actually only five grams of coffee, which means that's like half a normal espresso shot. So it, you need to double it uh, every time. And I know these are recyclable, but no one ever recycles them. I have been cooking at home quite a bit. Uh, I try to go out at least once a day just to go outside of the house. But to be honest, I've kind of just been at home, just like in this uh, mood. Uh, I recorded a podcast episode finally after one year. It's on Travel Like a Boss. You can find it anywhere. And I kind of just explained, you know, how I'm feeling, what's been going on. And then I've been a bit depressed, you know, this uh, travel lifestyle was great for 10 years, but I really just wanted to stay home uh, in my new you know, house that I bought and have me with my friends and have a normal life. And Russia's war has forced me to 
keep traveling and living out of Airbnbs. So even though it is a you know comfortable place, you know this isn't my home, right? Just like I'll never paint my place pink. So it is what it is. I can't complain though. At least I'm in a position where you know I can rent a comfortable Airbnb relatively in the city center, but it's still eleven hundred dollars a month, kind of money that I'd rather not be spending. Uh, and you know this isn't my my couch. This isn't my you know it's not it's not my place.